Good evening and welcome to the December 14th meeting of Florissant City Council. As we begin this evening, I would ask that Mr. Justin Smith of Troop 942 out of St. Andrew's Church come up and lead the council and the audience in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Thank you, Justin. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Schmidt? Here. Siam? Here. Lee? Here. Jones? Here. Egan? Yes. Here. Caputa? Here. Shildroff? Here. Hankey? Here. Pagano? Here. Let the record reflect that a quorum is present. Item number three. Mr. Cyan makes a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the November 23rd, 2015 meeting. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The minutes shall be approved. Item number four, certificates of recognition. Your Honor. Uh, before we begin this uh, section of the program, uh, I want to congratulate uh, our police department uh, for the high praise that they received a week ago when we had the CLIA public hearing. I'd like to thank all those citizens that testified. We had a variety of uh, uh, people speaking in behalf of our police department to the CLIA officials that were here for our accreditation. Uh, there was a very high praise from de many different segments of this community, from, uh, from educators, from uh, other police departments in the area, from fire department, uh, from uh, youth leaders, and it was a very diverse uh, and very complimentary group. Congratulations, Chief, on a, on a job well done by you and your department. Thank you, I appreciate that. Turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I do want to thank the, uh, the mayor and the city council for our, the support of the police department, and uh, like the mayor said uh, last week in this room, uh, we were very humbled by the uh, nice things that our citizens and our residents had to say about, and business people had to say about our police department. And uh, that uh, that carried on and that I'm sure that we're gonna get recertified as a uh, CALEA gold standard department. I do wanna thank uh, Captain Bowden who has really um, highlighted that and he put that all together and we really appreciate what he did. Um, and then tonight, um, <coughs> we're here to uh, honor 11 of our officers, um, two citizens, um, one of our canine dogs, and uh, on eight separate incidents, that happened within the city limits of Florida in the last four months. And uh, th these, these gentlemen do just outstanding police work and their loyalty and dedication to uh, the police department, our citizens, and our business people. And so we're here to honor these uh, officers tonight with accommodations and our two citizens who did just outstanding work, you'll hear about it in a minute, assisting our officers on two separate incidents that we really appreciate uh, what our citizens did to assist us with these investigations. Thank you. Our first certificate of recognition will be to Mr. Lawrence Washington. On Thursday, July 23rd, 2015, Officer McCarrick was in the process of de detaining a shoplifting suspect from the Flower Valley Shopping Center when the prisoner su suddenly broke free and ran. Mr. Lawrence Washington wished, witnessed the escaping suspect and immediately took action by chasing the suspect and tackling him to the ground. Mr. Washington restrained the suspect until Officer McCarrick was able to, to take custody of suspect. Mr. Washington's actions exemplify civic duty and courage to keep the city of Florissant a safe place to live. The Florissant Police Department wishes to officially commend Mr. Lawrence Washington for his swift action and invaluable assistance. Certificate of recognition goes to Mr. Adam Matthews. 
On Saturday, August 1st, 2015, Mr. Adam Matthews observed a male, male subject accompanied by a young child enter his place of work. Mr. Matthews' observations and inter interactions with this individual create a suspicious feeling regarding this adult. Because of the information he was able to obtain from the male, he initiated an online search and discovered that the male was a suspect in a parental abduction in Cook County, Illinois. Mr. Matthews immediately contacted Mr. Uh, Officer Easton with the information. Because of his actions, the suspect was arrested and the child was returned to his biological mother after five years of absence. The Florissant Police Department wishes to formally commend Mr. Adam Matthews for his invaluable assistance. The first commendation goes to Officer Chris Easton. On Saturday, August 1st, 2015, Officer Chris Easton was contacted by Mr. Matthews who advised him of suspicious male suspect subject and entered his place of business with a young child. When Mr. Matthews advised Officer Easton of his, suspicious, of his suspicions that the subject may, ha may be a suspect in a parental abduction in Illinois, Officer Easton made a quick and thorough follow-up investigation. Officer Easton's immediate attention to this investigation resulted in the verification of the crime, location of the suspect, and successful arrest. Because of Officer Easton's immediate actions, this child was returned to his biological mother after five years of absence. The Florissant Police Department wishes to formally commend Officer Easton for his thorough investiga investigation. <laughs> the next commendation goes to Officer Michael Arthur and K-9 Hugo. On June 18th and July 10th, 2015, Officer Michael Arthur, Arthur and his canine partner Hugo assisted the United States Postal Inspections, Inspector's Office with narcotics searches. Their efforts resulted in search warrants being issued on three different packages which led to a seizure of 19 pounds of marijuana and $70,000 in U.S. currency. Officer Arthur and his canine partner were hereby formally commended for their, formal, for their professional conduct and the removal of dangerous drugs and their profits from the streets of Florissant. Officers Nicholas Osmer and Kyle Feldman. On June 22, 2015, while on routine patrol, Officer Nicholas Osmer observed a vehicle in several residential areas that led him to believe, based on his experience, that the occupants were suspicious in nature. When he observed the vehicle commit a traffic violation, he executed a stop and ass assisted by C Officer Kyle Feldman. During the traffic stop, both officers observed that the passenger was visibly shaking. Although he gave a fake name, their investigative skills led them to discover his real identity and the fact that he was wanted by three other jurisdictions for burglary. The suspect was arrested and later confessed to a dozen different burglaries in the surrounding jurisdictions. Because of their excellent patrol techniques and investigative skills, Officer Osmer and Feldman cleared numerous burglaries and, form and reform removed a habitual felon from the streets of Florissant. For their excellent police work, they are hereby formally commended. Detective Tony Mocha and Detective Joe Monahan. On August 2nd, 2015, Detectives Tony Mocha and Joe Monahan were assigned to assign the investigation of a serious domestic assault first degree where a 36-year-old victim had her throat cut and she was stabbed in the chest. Their investigation led to the development of a suspect, her ex-boyfriend. As part of their investigation, they conducted a surveillance of the suspect's father's residence and observed his girlfriend visit the residence. She, when, when she left, she followed her to the bar in Alton, Illinois. With the assistance of the Alton police, the detectives were able to enter the bar, locate the suspect, and take him into custody. After a lengthy interview of the suspect, the detectives secured videotape confessions. Warrants were issued on the suspect for assault, first degree, serious physical injury, and armed criminal action for their ex excellent investigative techniques, interviewing skills, and professional handling, handling of this investigation. These detectives are hereby officially commended. Officer Brian Busson. On August 18, 2015, Officer Brian Busson was on routine patrol when he noticed a stranded female motorist in, with a flat tire. 
Officer Busson took initiative to stop in the pouring rain and retrieve the spare, jacked up the car, and changed her flat tire in spite of the inclement weather. His personal initiative to assist the stranded motorist certainly encouraged police community involvement in a positive way. Officer Busson is officially com commended for his professional conduct. <laughs> Officer Ryan McCarrick. On August 26, 2015, Officer Ryan McCarrick was directed to a burglary second report in the 1600 block of Saddle Spur Lane. He obtained all of the information that included a possible suspect. On October 14, 2015, he was directed to a robbery, two, a robbery second report also in the 1600 block of Saddle Spur Lane. While investigating this crime, he also gained information regarding suspect, which included a possible first name. Through Officer McCarrick's diligence, he was able to determine that both crimes were committed by the same individual. His follow-up invest investigation of the crimes led to the arrest of the suspect and obtaining a full confession on both crimes. Because of his excellent police work and professional handling of these criminal offenses that resulted in removal of a dangerous criminal, criminal from the streets of Florissant, he is formally commended. <laughs> Officer DeWitt Edwards and Detective Jared Coder. On August 29, 2015, Officer Edwards and Detective Coder were working a security detail at St. Sabina Church. Their attention was directed to a disturbance. While they were addressing the disturbance, it became necessary to arrest one of the persons involved when he refused to leave. As Officer Edwards and, and Detective Coder were in the process of arresting the subject, the subject suddenly fled and they both gave chase. During the chase, citizens started yelling, he has a gun. When the officers caught up to the suspect, they were able to disarm and arrest him without injury to the officer or the public. The efforts of these two officers resulted in taking a dangerous armed felon off the streets of Florissant. Because of their professional handling of this dangerous situation and their heroic ac actions, Officer Edwards and Detective Coder are hereby formally commended. <laughs> officer Mark Nardoni. On September 9, 2015, Officer Mark Mar Nardoni received information regarding location of a suspect that was wanted for robbery, weapons charges, and family probation violation within the city of Florissant. With this information, he was able to locate and arrest the suspect, subject at a local motel. As he continued his investigation, he was able to seize various quantities of narcotics and stolen firearm. This arrest led to the arrest of a second dangerous suspect for his diligent patrol efforts professional investigative techniques and observations, two violent criminals were taken off the streets of Flores and Officer, and Officer Nordoni is here, hereby formally commended. Can we get one more round of applause for these officers? I know that I, for one, would not want to be tackled by Mr. Washington. <laughs>
All right, let's move along. Next item on the agenda is hearing from citizens. If you would like to make a comment at this evening's uh, hearing from citizens portion of the meeting, I would ask that you complete a yellow speaker's card. They're located on the table next to the entrance to the chamber. Each citizen will have three minutes to make whatever statement they so desire to the council. This is not a question answer period. If you have a specific question you'd answer, see myself, the councilman, one of your councilmen or the mayor after, at, after the end of the meeting. Gina Walsh, Ms. Walsh, and in your case, I believe you're in my, uh, this concerns my ward and I will see you afterwards, ma'am. But, but no, no, so go ahead and uh, state your name and uh, your address for the record, please. And then you may begin, please speak okay. really loud. I was saying, I'm gonna try to talk slow too. I talk a lot, but not in front of groups. Um, my name's Gina Walsh and I live at 949 Charbonneau Road. Um, and I wanted to talk about a piece of sidewalk that runs on Charbonneau. I've lived right on Charbonneau for a little over four years now. And um, on the north side, or no, no, I'm sorry, not on the north side, but on my side, which is on the same side as Mount One Nursing Home, there is a sidewalk and it's continuous from Shackleford all the way down to mm -hmm. Lumberg. On the opposite side, it starts at Shackleford, but then it stops at Noreen Court, and then it doesn't pick up again till Rosetta, right there by the apartments. Um, I have children, I've witnessed a lot of traffic, it's growing, I love it. We have a lot of new families moving in. The children have increased over the four years I've been there. Um, but my question is, I would like to find out, and I don't know if it, the funds would come from the Proposition S that we just passed or other funds, but I wanted to find out how much it would be and what we could do to put a piece of sidewalk in there. Um, two weeks ago today, as I was out running around, about 5.30 at night, a gentleman who's a handicapped resident was crossing um, right there at Sunridge, where his sister lives, who's lived there for 15 years. He resides at Fenwood Nursing Home. He is in a motorized uh, wheelchair, and that is his transportation. Um, it gets dark earlier now because of winter, a lot of traffic coming off of Limburg that way, but he was struck accidentally by a vehicle, and I just thought that if we could get that piece of sidewalk, which I know that has to do with fluorescent, would be amazing. I've watched a gentleman with small children walking his children to Lawson and a stroller on that two-foot mm -hmm. piece of stretch there. Um, I have emailed and talked to some other folks, and I'm sorry I don't have it to you guys yet. I've been in and out of Jeff City and working. But um, I will email each of you this week. I'm waiting to get a letter of support from Representative English. Um, Senator Walsh and Representative McNeil, um, who are in support of that. And I wanted to talk to Mr. O'Mara from the county to see what it would take to maybe get one of those triggered lights. We have one up by Lawson, and that will completely stop the traffic. We have a lot of pedestrians that catch the bus on that little shoulder the whole bit. So that is what I'm here for, and to find out what we can do to maybe immediately check into it and see as the winter's coming and see what it would be about. Ms. Walsh, that's in my award. I do have your email address and your phone number. You'll hear from me tomorrow. If you want to stick around to the end of the meeting, I'll speak with you after the meeting tonight, Definitely. or I'll personally call you tomorrow. Definitely. Thank you very much Merry for coming. Christmas and thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. John Engelmeyer. Mr. Engelmeyer, if you'll state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Thank you, Mr. Egan. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Graham Road. Once again, I will speak on my several issues tonight. Three minutes is a lot of time. This is not a question or answer period, so I'll begin the discussion. I will discuss the use of the funds for the lobbyist with a nonpartisan form of government. Our lobbyist is Tim Green, who used to be a Democratic representative and senator from this area. We also have Democrat uh, Gina Walsh, and we also have a Democratic representative, Keith English. <coughs> That's supposed to be nonpartisan, but it looks like we've uh, rallied behind the Democratic Party within this city. Second item I have is police standards of St. Louis County, which is on the agenda tonight. I'm hoping that Chief Lowry would be here to explain. I've read the bill. Michael Mayer supported it, the county councilman from this area. 
who's also Democratic, <clears throat> and he supports the guidelines, the new guidelines. I looked at the guidelines we by far, in my opinion, saw no real distinction between what we have here with the excellence of our police force as was acknowledged earlier in the meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. The monthly operating statement, although it's a courtesy to post it online, this month's operating statement was enjoined two months together. In the many years that it's posted on here, there has never been one, one operating statement where it's combi combined a September and October period. There's no d clear delineation between the September expenses and October expenses. And I can't find a reason why this council sits there and accepts this from the administration without a complete breakdown. It may be a courtesy to me, but to you, I think it's a disservice. You are representing the citizens. That's that. Whether or not you will respond to my questions, I will then begin again requesting documents per the Missouri Sunshine Law. I went to the Board of Elections Commission and I went to the Florissant for Safe Streets Committee reports. In doing so, the committee report of uh, reporting forms, now that committee is dis, dis, uh, disengaging the opportunity of uh, reporting. Out of this, and I know I received three mailings at home, $196 was spent on postage. And again, I, I, for the whole entire city, to spend $196, I found it to be quite shocking because I'd like to do a mailing to the entire city for $196 if that's the case. $196 on October 26th and the U.S. Post Office 2200 North Lindbergh. So at this point here, something does not sound right. Thank you, Mr. Engelmeyer. Sir? Thank you. Your three minutes has expired. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kevin, Kevin O'Donnell. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. I'm Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, it was uh, three weeks ago we had the, or two weeks ago we had the house tour, the, the Florist and his Old Town Partnership house tour. It seemed to be a success, but I didn't, I didn't, I haven't heard anything about the final numbers or anything on it. But, it's, but I was at one, one residence, historic residence, and uh, it was, it seemed to have a good turnout in Ward 6. I was surprised that I didn't see any council, any, anybody from the city here at all, unless they just avoided the house that I was at. My point was, what I came to talk about was, I was reading the minutes from the last meeting, and it says Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane, stated that he supported Representative English in regards to his lawsuit. Also, he remembered that Mr. English had announced that he had cancer when he was a councilman at Ward 4. Here we go again. Uh, I don't know if it's censorship or that just intentionally leaving out important, doc important parts of my statement. But the main statement that I was bringing up is that Mr. English did raise he did, um, fought, he, he raised awareness of prostate cancer at Seitman Cancer Hospital. He, get, he made, it, made a, he did a fundraiser for the hospital. He also did, uh, he got the fluorescent male city employees free prostate screenings and all male residents in fluorescent prostate screenings. That isn't listed as what I said in the, in the minutes. But I, I guess we had to just cut it short and get make it short and sweet. But it's just like the communications, not, nothing's ever ever brought up. But that's mainly what I wanted to speak about this evening. And uh, I think that uh, hopefully we'll have a, a mild December. And I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A beer motan. Good evening, Ms. Motan. Evening. If you will state your name and your address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Good evening, my name is Abir Motan. 
and I am set up to be homeless by members in the city of Florissant and other people who are racketeering in the government. Okay. I also represent Global Bridge to the Future Fusion for Life Foundation, and I am Arab, and I am Muslim. First of all, I want to let you know, Mr. Thomas Schneider, Tommy Siam looks exactly like my ex-husband, and he looks like you, so evidently you and I are conflicts of interest in this whole thing. Your people, the previous mayor, his name was uh, Robert Lowry, that mayor had his people with the chief of police, Lowry, to give people to give to me to set me up with cocaine so that I can take cocaine. I have a property at 115 Deer Hackey Road. That's my property. You have your people in there. I'm going to get it back. Your people, when I go to the America's Job Center, they try to make me look like I steal. They hurt my friend. They put bugs on us. They try to make us, to, to, to set us up for entrapment. The police are there in the Metrolink. They have people who smoke marijuana to try to get us to hurt. There's, uh, they also set me up with marijuana from Chief Lowry's family who set me up, and he's got family over in Shrewsbury. I want to know something. Where is the justice? Evidently, you have so many members acting as cops and in, on the council. Where is the justice when they're all, you're all connected? You're all conflicts of interest. Where is the justice when you all come from the same yoke bondage? It's not fair of what you all do. You guys might fool a lot of people, and you probably brainwash a lot of people, and you threaten a lot of people, but you cannot do extortion on me. You have labor trafficked me. You have not paid me for labor trafficking me. You're involved in human trafficking, sex, and fraudulent in vitro fertilization. Shame on you. Anybody can put up an act, tell their associates, well, here, let's, let's, look, let's like, look like we're doing a good job. You're not. I want, I want accountability here. I don't want no fake act just to try to shut people up. You're corrupt. Now, I want to get paid. I worked hard. You worked me for Ava Jordan, and Ava Jordan's related to Schneider, um, Mayor Schneider. Mayor Schneider, the people before you set the whole council up and arranged everything, even Mr. Henderson, who was before Siam, is also inside. I am a human being. Don't set me up to be a target. Don't even set me up to be a stray or an outcast. We're not, I'm not stupid. I'm not ignorant. You all seconds. set me up for entrapment and shame on you. Shame on your people trying to cover, sacrifice me to help other people. It's about time you heard this from me. I want my house and then don't have your people try to stop me from doing that global bridge future, uh, future, future fusion for life foundation shelter. None of you will be in it, okay? Because all of you are corrupt. It's all in the family. And then your public works guy, he put bills on my Thank house. you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good night, ma'am. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, communication. And there is none. Item number eight, public hearings. I will reopen 1510-025, reopen uh, the public hearing that's been postponed twice, I believe. Ms. Pagano. Yes, I, um, I moved to close this public hearing. We have not heard from him, and I think we've given him ample enough time to answer some questions, but I have not heard from him. The city clerk has not heard from him. So I would, I I would suggest close. before we, we take that motion, we allow anyone in the audience that would, may have came to speak tonight about this public hearing, if you would like to do that. Now is the time to talk about the public hearing for Rubio's Fresh Mexican Grill. Seeing none, Ms. Pagano has made the motion to close the public hearing. That is seconded by Mr. Hinky. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the public hearing shall be closed. Public hearing 15-11027, I will reopen that public hearing which was postponed from the last meeting. The petitioner in this, Mr. Lache, has informed me, informed me very late this evening that he does not anticipate going forward with this project. However, since I don't have anything in writing, we will let the public hearing continue. 
So there, if there is anyone who is interested in commenting at this time on the Glory to God Kingdom Fellowship Hall, Church and Daycare Center, now is the opportunity to do so. Seeing none, I will move to postpone the public hearing. That is seconded by Mr. Jones. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the meeting will be postponed until January the 11th, 2016. Item number nine, hold business. Second readings, Bill 9144. Mr. Schildrop makes a motion for a second reading. That is seconded by Mr. Siam. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. Opposed, clerk, please read the bill for a second time. Ordered submitting to the qualified voters of the city of Florissant, Missouri for their approval at the general municipal election to be held on in, in the city on the 5th of April, 2016, a proposition to authorize the city to continue applying and collecting the local sales tax on titling of motor vehicles, trailers, boats, and outboard motor motors that were purchased from a source other than licensed Missouri deal dealer. Mr. Lee makes a motion for a third reading that is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a third reading, aye. aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Madam Clerk, please read the bill for a third time. Ordinance submitting to the qualified voters of the city of Florissant, Missouri their for their approval at the general municipal election to be held in the city on the fifth day of April, 2016, a pro proposition to authorize the city to continue applying and collecting the local sales tax on the titling of motor vehicles, trailers, boats, and outboard motors that were purchased from an, a source other than licensed Missouri dealer. Prior to a final vote being taken on this, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to make comment. Good evening, sir. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and your address for the record, I appreciate it. You may begin. Thank you, Mr. Egan. John Inglemeyer, 1281 Graham Road. On this particular bill, 9144, it addresses the sales tax on motor vehicles. The last day of turning anything on the ballot is on January 19th for the city to certify the ballot by January 26th at 5 p.m. On this issue here, I know it's going on in the April ballot, but also at the same time, I'd like to see the city uh, permits and licenses raised. I'm a businessman in the city of Florissant. I think the fee that I'm charged by the city is reasonable, but not justifiable. It should be raised. Business licenses have not been challenged or raised at all for many, many, many years. I'm also a landlord. I pay a license fee to be a landlord. It's $15. The cost of administration of that letter is abominable. It is just absolutely unrealistic. The fees ought to be raised to a justifiable amount. And me, as a landlord, speaking on behalf of myself, $50 to me is not that outrageous. I think that we deserve it as a citizen, and I am a citizen as well as a landlord and a businessman. Why don't we raise our business licenses? Because is it the Chamber of Commerce that you're afraid of? Or is it the businesses that we're afraid of? I'm saying that I think Mr. Bagano sits on the renters subcommittee. That fee ought to be raised $50. I think the, the business licenses, and we don't have a subcommittee set up for that, ought to be raised. Deal with it. All the expenses have gone up. The citizens have chucked up to the plate, and they've been paying their share. Business licenses is an opportunity to doing businesses within the city. I doubt seriously if anybody's going to have any discussion on this, but again, that's why I gave you the dates. You can offer another bill by July 19th and have it submitted to St. Louis County. So it goes on the ballot for April. Let the citizens voice their opinion. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make comment on this bill that's on the floor? And your name and address my, for the record, My name's sir. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane, Florissant, Missouri, 6331. Okay, I was... I, came before the council on August 20, August 17th, I believe it was, earlier this year, 
and I asked about how much it's going to cost to put Prop S, which we didn't even wasn't even given a name for it back then. I asked how much that election was going to cost. Eight thousand, twenty thousand. Nobody knew. Well, we found out that it wasn't thirty-five. It was like forty-four thousand five hundred dollars. And I asked more than once, why couldn't we put Prop S on the April ballot? And I was told there's nothing. The, the city of Florissant has no uh, no, no uh, issues on the ballot in 2016. Okay, and I'm sure that this license fee, renewing this license fee or whatever, you know, didn't just pop up 13 days after the election, or yeah, 13 days because it was on November 3rd, Prop S passed. November 16th, Mr. Mr. <coughs> Lee proposed uh, putting $35,000 towards the election in April, 6th, April 5th, 2016 for this purpose. Now, we didn't know about this before. We didn't know this, that it was coming up a year ahead of time. We, somebody's, somebody's falling down on the job, man. You know, this isn't right. I look at this, it was 45, say $45,000 what they allocated or asked for to pay for that last election. This election's gonna cost the same thing. So why don't we do like Mr. Inglemeyer said, put some other things on the ballot also. I mean, it's bad enough that we're gonna be, we're gonna be soaked twice for $45,000 since we know how much it's gonna cost. And since the, uh, b the election board sets how many polls are gonna be open, it's up to them. Now you, you could talk to them and I'm sure that the, the mayor Mr. Egan, you should have a little clout as being a pre council president. Maybe you should request that they cut down the numbers so we don't have to pay $45,000 again. That's $90,000. How long is this, uh, this propos how long is this going to last? Or is this gonna be one year, three years, five years, or, or forever? I don't know, nothing was, the, I, read, I read all the, the attachments on this, and I couldn't find anything how, how long it will last. Can somebody tell me how long this will last? Will this have to go before the people again to be voted on? Or is this gonna be the, the last time? Anybody have any answers? Mr. Lee's usually the one that always gets my, an my answers for me, but uh, does anybody have anything? This is, this is a question and answer session because I'd, I'd like to have some feedback. I don't have any feedback for you, Mr. O'Donnell. Do you have any other questions or comments? Okay, so you don't know, you don't know if this is gonna be, gonna have to be done again in next year, or three years from now, or five years from now? You don't know? I, I don't have any feedback for you. Ms. Pagano? Yes, this is in regards to Mr. Engelmeyer. Um, the committee with uh, Mr. Jones, myself, and Mr. Siam have been working very hard on this rental property along with the administration, our city attorney, um, our code enforcers, and there, there's quite a few. Uh, the question that you asked about the fees is being discussed, has been discussed. We are still discussing it. Hopefully in the near future, we will come up with a solution that we feel is free, that is fair to all. So just so you know, we are working on this. Thank you, Ms. Pagano. Do you have any other, other comments, Mr. But, O'Donnell? But you, nobody's got, a, got any kind of information I don't, for me? I don't have any feedback for you. N no information from anybody? There's nine people up here, for God's sake. Ten people if I count the mayor. Mayor, do you know? I'd like to have an answer right now so everybody can hear this. Uh, we, we don't have any, we don't have any, any I don't have any comment for you. Mr. Lee, do you have a comment Okay, for so this is gonna be $90,000 that we spent within six months for elections. Uh, how, how long is it gonna take to reimburse? Mr. Our, Lee, do you have a comment? How, how long is it gonna take to get this 45? Mr. Lee, do you have a comment? Is your question about will this have to be gone on again? The answer is no. This is to reinstate a tax that was previously collected the city has, every city in St. Louis County has until November of 2016 
to reinstate this tax. Once it's, if the voters choose to reinstate it, it'll be permanently reinstated. It's a sales tax on vehicles and items that are purchased out of state and brought into the state of Missouri. So once that's passed by the voters, if it's passed, then it would be a permanent sales tax, just like sales tax on a car that you buy from a local dealer or a state dealer. So it's a one-shot deal, yes or no? out of state is not subject to state sales tax under the change that the Supreme Court ruled until the voters approve it. Thank you, Mr. Lee. On here, or maybe, you know, we could move this election up until the November primaries, when the primaries come up, or the primaries in August, aren't they? We could do, the, we could do it in August, couldn't we? Uh, all right, thank you, Mr. W Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you very much. It's my tax money too, Mr. Egan. It is. For I appreciate years. your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to make comment on this bill? Seeing none, clerk, will you please pull the council? Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Bill 9144 passes and becomes Ordinance 8190-8190. Item number 10, new business. Item number 11, resolutions. I'll make a motion for a first reading for resolution 984. I'm sorry. Motion, resolution 984. <laughs> A resolution in opposition to bill number 276, 2015, adopted by the St. Louis County Council pertaining to police services and cities. I'll make a motion for a second reading that is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion concerning the second reading? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Opposed? And if you'd be so kind as to read the motion, I would ask you to read the entire motion. Resolution. Resolution. Resolution number 8984, resolution in opposition to bill number 276, 2015, adopted by the St. Louis County Council pertaining to the police services and cities. Whereas the city of Florissant Police Department has been recognized as one of the finest police departments in the nation and has been certified by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. And whereas the mayor and city council have always strived to work cooperatively with St. Louis County and the St. Louis County Council. Whereas St. Louis County Council passed and approved Bill Number 276, 2015, County Legislation, authorizing County Executive to issue minimum police standards for all municipal, municipal police departments within the city of St. Louis County. Whereas, although, although the Florissant Police Department will, exempt, will be exempt from submitting statements to the county executive pertaining to Florissant Police Department's minimum standards because the Florissant Police Department is certified by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. The Mayor and City Council object to the proposition that, that the county executive has the authority to establish minimum police standards for all police departments within St. Louis County. Whereas the Mayor and City Council believe that the, city co that the county legislation is a challenge to the economy, <coughs> to the City of Florissant and all cities within St. Louis County. And whereas the mayor and city council also object to the provisions contained within the county legislation that provide the county executive with the power and authority to review all collaborative agreements among cities to determine whether or not such agreements are acceptable to the county executive because this would give the county executive the power to override the city council's authority to enter into cooperative agreements and allow the county executive to unilaterally determine whether or not such collaborative agreements promotes health, safety, and welfare of the re residents. Whereas the Mayor and City Council also object to the county legislation because it authorizes the county executive to investigate and determine based on the county executive's sole discretion to determine whether the police department, the Florissant Police Department is providing deficient policing services, which is defined as an ability or unwillingness to keep the peace to protect the public health and to provide timely or sufficient response or to meet and confirm, to, or meet or conform to the Missouri police standards. 
And whereas the Missouri, or the mayor and the city council also object to the county's legislation because it provides the county executive with authority to usurp the city's authority to provide police services and authorizes the city as a county executive to provide the police services within the city by St. Louis County or some other city when the county executive determines in, its, in his discretion sorry, that the city is providing deficient policing services or is failing to satisfy the minimum policing standards. Whereas the mayor and city council also object to the legislation purporting to provide the county executive with authority to oversee and operate police services within the city when the county executive does not have the authority to operate the police services provided by St. Louis County. Whereas the mayor and city council attempted to provide input concerning the county legislation prior to the, its adoption, but the county council and the county executive ignored the suggestions provided to it. And whereas the mayor and city council have authorized the city attorney to join in litigation to challenge the lega legality of the county legislation. Now therefore be it resolved by the, by the council of the city of Florissant, Missouri, as follows. Resolved that the city of Florissant opposes the St. Louis County Council's adoption of bill number 276, 2015, pertaining to police services in cities and collaborative entities because such legislation is an, is an attack on the autonomy of the city of Florissant and the police services that are provided by the Florissant Police Department. Further resolved that the city attorney is authorized to participate in litigation challenging the legality of the provision of bill number 276, 2015. Thank you, thank you. And I ask that the clerk read that in its entirety because it is a very important document. It's a very strongly worded document. This is not about police services. This is not about the city of Florissant's adopting standards or adhering to standards. We already do that and at the Florissant Police Department. This is about our sovereign right to act as a city, to rule ourselves, to have our own sovereign police department that is unfettered by the St. Louis County Executive at his sole discretion. Um, I I'm very, very much support this resolution and I think it, and I hope that sends a very strong message that, and that message is not that about services or not about standards. We all support standards. We have those standards. It is about our, our sovereignty in the city of Florissant. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Egan. I want to pretty much echo what you said. I want to thank the city attorney, the chief of police, the mayor for um, working to draft this resolution that I think we're going to pass unanimously tonight. And I'm going to reiterate what you said. I don't think any of us up here are against minimum standards for police departments. Um, I think what we're against is the way that this has, has taken place. I know that the Municipal League and our mayor and several other municipalities worked very closely, tried to work with the county executive, with the county, uh, with the county uh, council and, and everybody to say, let's sit down, let's, let's put the brakes on, let's, let's get together and, and work on something that we feel we can all live with because we believe that police standards are a good thing. But we are against the way that our, our, you said, sovereign municipality, the rights of our municipality. I don't, I don't think any of us feel that the county has the right to come in and do this and put these kinds of, this kind of authority on, on us and the other municipalities involved. And there's been people that have asked me, and I'm sure we've all gotten the same question, why would we be against this? We are CALEA certified. We're high, held at the highest standard. We have a great police department, and that's true. Um, but is this step one towards what's going to happen down the line and, and trying to trying to take take control of this again? So that's in layman's terms why why I support this as well, strongly support it. And I understand there's going to be many municipalities that are going to be challenging this, and, and I think the municipal league will be joining in as well. So I'm very confident that we can get this uh, turned around and not have to do the litigation. Although I'm not confident that's going to happen. So. Thank you. Mr. Lee, thank you for your comments. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, um, I feel the same way as um, Mr. Lee, Mr. Egan does. I know this is, this is an attack on our sovereignty for, through a city of Flarsen. Um, our police, as of right now, we, we have the best, best police force in uh, St. Louis County in Missouri altogether. I mean, we have a very good police, and I don't think St. Louis County 
should come in if they feel that they have public safety is at risk in Florissant, and they have the right to come in and take that over. I feel that is wrong on the, um, the municipalities and the, and the democratic way of life that we, we have in this city. So I, have, I am for this resolution and um, I will support it. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Caputo. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, I just want to let everybody know I'm for the police standards too and uh, I just wish uh, uh, our brothers on the county council, which uh, I have a lot of personal friends up there, uh, could have communicated this a little bit better. Uh, I think they kind of brought the, uh, um, the trailer before the horse and we should have dealt with the horse first instead of the trailer. Uh, I'm totally for this resolution also. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And to be clear that uh, I'll just make sure as Mr. Lee mentioned, uh, we the city council did authorize the city attorney to engage in litigation to fight this earlier this evening. Madam Clerk, will you read the bill for a Thought we did that. I'm sorry, I got, I got wrapped up. Motion, I'll make a motion for a third reading as seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Roll call. I need a roll call vote, please. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Puda? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Resolution in opposition to Bill Number 276, 2015, adopted by the St. Louis County Council pertaining to police services and cities. Prior to a final vote being taken on this resolution, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Hold on, hold on. Let me get you up. Let me get you up. Very good. Go ahead. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Graham Road. I appreciate the City Council putting this uh, resolution before and opposing this. I read the bill from St. Louis County. I think Mr. Lee explained it quite eloquently in terms of the information and sovereignty. We do have a good police force. I testified to that last week at the special meeting. And again, our sovereignty should be sovereign. We should be separate from the county. I think that we've got a great police force. I did talk to Chief Lowry moments before this, and he will give me better explanation of my questions that I have concerning this resolution and the bill in St. Louis County that was passed as an ordinance. Thank you, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make comment? Your Honor. Yeah, I appreciate the City Council uh, passing this. Uh, I've been very vocal up till now. Uh, again, uh, we are very much for standards. Our, our police department uh, sets the highest standard uh, pr probably in the state maybe, uh, especially if you judge by the testimony that we got last week with many of you were present. So we we're certainly far standards, uh, and uh, we offered our, we reached our hand out to the county executive and the county council uh, in every way uh, we could to try to uh, avoid this uh, confrontation, and it uh, seemed like they were set on a confrontation, and uh, sometimes uh, that happens in a democracy. Democracies, uh, the republics, things can get a little bit messy, and hopefully we'll clean our mess up and we'll go forward together. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Henke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Let the record reflect that the resolution was adopted unanimously. Item number seven, board appointments. Seeing none, item number eight, request. From Ward 6, a request for a permit for four hens for Frank and Trina Pruitt, located at 693 North Lafayette. That motion, that request is, our motions made by Mr. Hinkey. Yes, uh, I'm very familiar with 693. It was part of my mail route for many, many years. Uh, <clears throat> bring it on. <laughs> Mr. Hinkey makes the motion as seconded by Mr. Jones, any discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? And the request shall be granted. Another request out of ward number six. 
request for a transfer of special use permit number 7908 from Mark Gillette, DBA, Mag Motors, to Corey Gully, DBA, the Car Doctor, LLC, for the operation of an auto repair business for the property located at 1890 North Highway 67. Mr. Henke? Yes, I spoke with Mr. Gully on the phone. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> and it's just a transfer from one owner to another for another car shop going in the same location. And I wish, wish him all the best of luck in his venture. Motion is made by Mr. Henke to grant this request. That motion is seconded by Mr. Schildroff. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion shall be granted. Or the request shall be granted. Bills for first reading. Bill number 9150. Ordinance amending Title III of the Florida and City Code, Schedule 8, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets by adding there to the west side of McNulty Drive, 200 feet from the intersection of Lindsay Lane. Mr. Jones. Yes, I'd like to speak on uh, both of these. They're in my ward. Uh, uh, since I've became councilman, I've had problems on both streets. Uh, the last tragic accident uh, that the first responders were out uh, with their fire truck, uh, I went down there and knocked on wood that uh, nobody parked on one side of the street that day so that the ambulance and the fire truck could get down to the house uh, where the child was taken from. Uh, I was lucky that day. Uh, the signs have been put out there on an emergency basis uh, between 30 and 90 days. Uh, I'm wanting them to stay full time uh, the traffic commission wanted to leave them there for three to four, which made no sense to me. Uh, if there's going to be a problem, we don't know when the fires or emergencies are going to happen on both of these streets. When you have cars parked on both sides at the same place, you cannot get a trash truck down, which I have uh, numerous times on McNulty been called saying, Timmy, they can't get to my trash truck. They missed my trash day again. I've got trash piled up. I've had enough of this. Uh, I, Mr. I, Jones, you can make a motion for second reading. Is that where we're leading? Yes, please. Okay, why don't we make the motion, then we'll go through the discussion. You betcha. Okay, there, Mr. Mo Mr. Jones makes a motion for a second reading. I'll, I'll second that motion for a second reading. All in favor? Aye. Now you're on discussion. Now, we're in, now if you want to continue your okay. discussion. <laughs> no, just short. I, uh, the signs got put in, you guys. I went out and spoke. Everybody was a little bent out of shape about them for a little bit. They're not used to it. Uh, but if a fire ever happens or an emergency ever happened, I said it'd pay off for all of them. And they all agreed, and they're all happy that the signs are there now. And I don't think the signs should be pulled out or a time changed on them. They'll be end up getting tickets on them. Then it, it's just going to confuse people, not help people. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Schneider. Uh, just for your information, we, we have a handful of streets uh, that were developed uh, with uh, narrower uh, right-of-ways. And I believe these two streets are among those. And uh, so we don't have the ability to have the normal width of pavement that we have on all our other residential streets. And uh, so I support Mr. Jones' concern as far as emergency vehicles are concerned. But uh, just so you know, this, doesn't, this is, isn't going to affect every street. But we do have a few where the, the distance from the, to the side of the street to the other side of the street pretty much takes up the whole right of way that we have. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there's a motion on the floor, seconded. All in favor, a second reading, aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, if you'll read the bill for a second time. Ordinance amending Title III of the Forest and City Code, Schedule 8, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets by adding there to the west side of McNulty Drive for 200 feet from the intersection of Lizzie Lane. Mr. Jones makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Schildroff. Roll call vote, please. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Kuda? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hinky? Yes. Pagano? Yes. We will read the vote, the bill for a uh, third time. Ordinance amending Title Three of the Forest and City Code, Schedule 8, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets by adding there to the west side of McNulty Drive for 200 feet from the intersection of Lindsay Lane. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone present that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Huda? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Pagano? Yes. 
Bill number 9150 passes and becomes ordinance 8191, 8191. Bill 9151. Ordinance amending Title III of the Forest and City Code, Schedule 8, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets by adding there to the east side of Charlotte Drive for 200 feet from the intersection of Lindsay Lane. Mr. Jones makes a motion for a second reading and is seconded by, by Mr. Caputo. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill a second time. Ordinance amending Title III of the Forest and City Code, Schedule 8, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets, by adding there to the east side of Charlotte Drive for 200 feet from the intersection of Lindsay Lane. Mr. Jones makes a motion for a third reading that is seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Huda? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Please read the bill for a third time. Ordinance amending Title III of the Forest and City Code, Schedule 8, par parking prohibited at all times on certain streets by adding there to the east side of Charlotte Drive for 200 feet from the intersection of Lindsay Lane. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Anki? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Bill 9151 passes and becomes ordinance 8192-8192. Bill 9152. Ordinance authorizing transfer of special use permit number 7908 from Mark Gillette, DBA, Mag Motors, to Corey Gulley, DBA, the Car Doctor, LLC, for the operation of auto auto repair business for the property located at 1890 North Highway 67. Motion for a second from Mr. Hinky. Mr. Mr. Lee? He wants to read three readings and clear our agenda for the year. That would be, that would be my, uh, all right. I will, I will accept your, that as a second to Mr. Hinky's motion for a second reading, seconded by Mr. Lee. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. Ordinance authorizing transfer of special use permit number 7908 from Mark Gillette, DBA, Mag Motors, to Corey Gully, DBA, the Car Doctor, LLC, for the operation of an auto repair business for the property located at 1890 North Highway 67. And Mr. Hankey makes a motion for a third reading. That motion is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please, for a third reading. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Please read the bill a third time. Ordinance authorizing a transfer of special use permit number 7908 from Mark Gillette, DBA, Mag Motors, to Corey Gully, DBA, the Car Doctor, LLC, for the operation of auto repair business for the property located at 1890 North Highway 67. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childra? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Bill 9152 passes and becomes ordinance 8193-8193. Next item on the agenda, council announcements. Mr. Hankey, you're up. Yes, uh, good evening everyone. I just want to make this real quick. Wish everyone a very happy, merry holiday, merry Christmas to you all. And it's this season, to, uh, let's watch out for each other and our neighbors and give a little extra thought to, our, to, to people that need it in our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hinky, Mr. Jones. Okay, everybody get ready. It's gonna be a long one. Here you go, it's yours. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to team, as I always do, you guys. Uh, there's always somebody hungry down the street, morning, noon, and night. Uh, please take time to uh, get an extra can good or a couple extra bucks, run it down to them people. Uh, I also want to share, uh, uh, when we had Santa Claus up here at City Hall, uh, which is not too long ago, I come up and participated most of the day. And it was a, a sure fine warm day, seeing all the kids that was up here, this place was packed. 
A lot of the parents did ask me to reach out to our mayor that somehow we can make this a little bigger next year because the line was very long and Santa was worn out. Uh, it was very nice to see, uh, like I said, all those kids in one room. Uh, later on that evening, I went over to Project Liftoff and I spent the majority of the evening there uh, with my daughter on her 12th birthday and some of her friends that spent the night. Uh, it was great to participate in that, to see some of our officers, our mayor, uh, our police department, uh, how hands-on they were and how it does go hand in hand. Uh, to see some of the kids fall down, bump their knee, and to see one of our female officers uh, help the little girl off the ice and put a Band-Aid on her knee goes a long ways in my book. Uh, it was a very interesting night and a very learning experience. It was great to see 450 kids, a sold out show. Uh, I know Snyder and I think Tim Lowry snuck a couple more of them in that didn't have tickets, but uh, I overlooked that uh, as a console person. But uh, it was definitely an enjoyable night for all those kids. You guys, I think we're very fortunate to have an Egan Center that will hold that and just a good safe place for those kids to go and participate in. But uh, it was a great evening. Uh, I want to wish Ward 2 a Merry Christmas. Uh, I want to thank my girlfriend for coming up uh, and the rest of the council. Uh, it's been a good year. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for your heartfelt words. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yes, I would like to congratulate all the police officers and detectives that were accommodated tonight. It um, goes to show you what kind of police force we do have in the city. And um, also, I would like to congratulate um, Nagels. Nagels had a very well attended um, Christmas event over Saturday. They had it. They had a reindeer there, Santa Claus, and a few of the um, superheroes were there. And it was very successful. There was a lot of people that came by Nagels Saturday. And um, also, Eddie was there. Eddie was very good. He had some pictures taken with Eddie the dog. So it was a very successful afternoon in, in Nagels parking lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caputo. Mr. Shildroff. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the city of Florissant has a dog park and it's located in Ward 5. <laughs> and for 2016, the, the uh, prices have been reduced for membership. For a resident, it's $5 for the full year. A non-resident, it's 10. And if you need any other information on it, you can call the Egan Center at 921 4466 our JFK Center at 921 4250 and I would like to wish the residents of the city of Florissant a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year thank you thank you Mr. Shildroff Mr. Lee you're up Mr. Shildroff did you just have a special event in the past couple weeks an anniversary or something that congratulations on for you and Mary for your anniversary so <laughs> And Mr. Jones, I talked to Santa, and you're wired, you're good, don't worry about it. You're uh, going to be taken care of this year. He's off the naughty list. <laughs> Didn't he's been good this year. On behalf of myself and my family, I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a safe and healthy New Year. I also ask everybody, please keep in mind our servicemen and women that, that are there keeping us safe and won't be able to be with their families this year. Uh, this has been a really good year for the City Council and for... Um, this is my 13th year, and I, I just have to say going into this year, we had a lot of challenges, we had a lot of disagreements, but I'm very, very happy that um, this council has really pulled together and worked so well together with the mayor, with the administration, and everything, and I, I just really feel like we're blessed for that. So, again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Lee, and, and don't think you're getting off so early because we're going to do council Christmas greetings afterwards. I, I encourage you all to stick around for Ms. Pagano's. Mr. Schmidt, you're up. <laughs> you can do it. We'll do this as a warm-up. Mr. Schmidt, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Egan. No, I'd just like to take this time, too, to uh, uh, wish all our employees, as well as our residents, a uh, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, it looks like this next new year is going to be a very, very prosperous one. Uh, I know we're working in construction trades is my normal job, and we are just swamped, uh, and jobs look good for at least the next couple of years. So uh, it should be a very nice year for the rest of us in St. Louis, hopefully, as well. So, again, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Ms. Pagano. 
the moment you've all been waiting for. I would just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pagano. Uh, I'm going to echo what Mr. Jones said, and if, you, if I just sat back and looked from the 4th of July on, the amount of events that I've been able to attend in the city, uh, the Harvest Fest and, and the Race to the Shrine and Old Town in Florence and, and, and the uh, Lighting the Tree, we really have a special city here, and as the mayor has said on numerous occasions, we just like to get together, and it is really good to be together as a community on these different events as we go on through the year. I guess the next big one we'll have will be the New Year's Eve dance. I'm not going to take your thunder. I know you're going to talk about the New Year's Eve dance, but I'm sure you'll have some celebrity bartenders there. Uh, at any rate, I do also want to wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas, and again, I encourage you to stick around for the official the official Christmas greetings for the council. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, you're right, uh, New Year's Eve, uh, I hope that all of you can uh, attend as uh, bartenders. Uh, if possible, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we even made the Jay Leno show one year, and uh, it's a countdown at noon for our seniors, and uh, they really enjoy having a council there, uh, help, you know, just helping to, helping to celebrate the new year. And uh, speaking of celebrating, uh, one of our uh, one of our businesses uh, was so inspired by uh, the success of Proposition S that they have a special deal, and I uh, gave the council a supply, and I think I can get some more, but they're uh, there are uh, little business card size uh, certificates from Culver's for you buy one, get one free, and it, in honor of Project Liftoff, because you know uh, streets need concrete, it's medium concrete mixer from Culver's. And the council has a supply, and so if you see your council member, ask them for a uh, get one, buy one, get one free concrete mixer from Culver's. And uh, I think Mr. Jones had about as much fun as those kids uh, at Project Liftoff, and there was 550 of them, not 450 of them. Don't sell us short. And uh, the chief and I enjoyed ourselves uh, immensely. And uh, this is our 28th one, I believe. We started in 1989 to promote DARE. We had a DARE graduation today. We've had many DARE graduations. Uh, and uh, it's just great to see the number of parents who come to the DARE graduations and the kids really re uh, interact really well with Officer Summers and the chief and all the other policemen. Uh, it's uh, it's just a great thing. We teach them uh, all the perils that's going to come their way to try to get them prepared to say no. Uh, we already mentioned. Uh, now we're going to have next year. We're going to have a tent. For uh, we're going to try to get a tent to make the space even bigger, so that uh, maybe we'll have. I guess we can't have two Santas, but we're going to have another opportunity for Santa on the 19th at the Nature Lodge, uh, Saturday, December 19th, from 9 to 10:30. Santa's coming back, Mr. Jones by popular demand. And uh, if people want to write letters to Santa, they can drop them off at JFK. We'll make sure they get delivered. And uh, we also had, uh, we got a winter break camp for parents that need a place for their kids to enjoy while they're on Christmas break. So get a hold of the uh, Civic Center or the JFK for that. And uh, we have uh, a food drive uh, till uh, uh, December 17th, uh, you can drop it off here at City Hall or Egan or JFK. For We'll get that food to, our, to some needy families. There's a snowman building contest through February 14th, if we get some snow. And uh, free skate on New Year's uh, Eve, December 31st, uh, from 2 to 4. And then also on Martin Luther King holiday and President's Day, we'll have a free skate from 2 to 4. Uh, fitness classes, sign up for those, get your resident cards, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Pagano makes a motion to adjourn that is seconded by Mr. Siam. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The council shall stand in recess. See you next year.